Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going through the Arms Warrior Artifacts quest. Of course, we will also get to see how Arms is playing in Legion, at least somewhat. I will do my full Arms testing video in a little bit of time. Anyway, we've just had this raven creature appear inside, bit rude of it, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a message from somebody who says they're a new friend in the Ledgerman Lodge. It's actually from this pretty cool, very cool guy that uh, you will have seen from the Fury Warrior video. So let's head over there, and you know, it is interesting how things are going with ARMS. From my initial gameplay testing, it does seem like Blizzard are doubling down on the idea of ARMS all being about that Colossus Smash window, where you're going to be dealing like crazy damage, but then outside of that, it's a pretty slow pace. That's, I think, you know, it's, it's the sort of thing where it wouldn't appeal to me personally as much as Fury, but I think for people who like that, it's certainly going to work. Let's talk to this guy and see what he wants. All right, yeah, so a small band of heroes are going to the Broken Shore. He's got transportation. This is actually the exact same as from the Fury Quest. So uh, yeah, let's just hop over there. I'll try to cut it a little bit quicker this time because I know loads of you have already seen it. And just like last time, we both die, but that is not the end for Valkyr will come and uh, bring us up to the Halls of Valor where we will get to talk to Odin. And then finally, we'll um, actually get the part of the quest that you're really here for. Great, so we just need to follow her over to Odin. And one of the cool things about the Halls of Valor is I know that it's been a little bit beefed out with NPCs, though I think that might only be in the Great Hall over here. So here's Odin. Once again, we're getting our kind of big scene here. Anyhow, that's us getting our little moment of glory, so let's actually just move on to the uh, to the quest that you all want to see. So Odin's asking us what quest we want to go for, and this time we'll be getting Stromkar the Warbreaker, which is a two-handed sword for arms warriors. Its effect is the Mortal Strike, has a chance to unleash a swipe of void energy, causing shadow damage to all enemies in front of you. So the first king of the humans, Thoradain, had performed many acts of heroism and valor during his rule. At the end, while on a personal quest, he stumbled upon the tomb of my brother Tyr, and the grave prison of the monstrosity he died fighting. Though not his intention, he awakened the beast and died there, keeping him from escaping. This is Thoradain's sword Stromkar that kept that monster at bay. Retrieve it and finish off what Tyr and Thoradain started. Kill, oh dear, Zalakaz and the Thraxi, I, I think. Big, big, big words. So, we need to go and deal with some old god stuff. This is really cool. So, if you're not aware of the lore behind all of this, Tyr was one of the Titanic Watchers who was responsible for um, maintaining and, you know, sort of keeping watch over a, um, a Titanic... Uh, like prison, jail thingy in Terrace Fall Glades. Of course, other examples of big Titan prison complexes are uh, Ulduar, pretty big one. So there are other classes which go down here, and I've got to wonder then if this quest is going to be following the rough template of what was going on with the Shadow Priests. Either way, I really like the lore behind this weapon and behind that king. It maybe would have been nice if we would have got, you know, got a little bit more about it previously, but still, it's it's a cool little story. Warriors get an extremely badass effect when they, they come down from, well, th this game's equivalent of the Rainbow Bridge. Yeah, this right now is very similar to what was going on with, um, with the Shadow Priest, but that said, like... You know, I think the people who are super into their warriors are maybe not the same people who are super into their Shadow Priests, so... I'd say this will be new to most of the people who actually watch it. Now, gameplay-wise, we're really looking at something quite similar. Um, that said, the last time I actually had any form of interaction with the Arms Warrior was watching uh, was watching Asmongold's video with the SNES controller, so I really have not played a lot of Arms. However, it does seem to be very similar. It's all about you do your Colossus Smash, then you unleash your Mortal Strike, and uh, you know use Slam as your filler. Talents were a little bit different. I think Slam was actually a talented ability back in um back in warlords but uh, anyway that's how it's going so here is thoradain long ago i made a terrible mistake one about to become worse i delayed its release with my life but soon it will awaken below in the tomb lies a horrifying monster that i awoke in my thirst for truth my sword stromkar is buried in it keeping it from regenerating fully i must ask you go in there brave the dangers and finish what i started long ago i will be with you all right, so it looks like the two of us, then, are going to be going down. He's labeled there as the King of Arathor, Arathor being the first kingdom of the humans in the World of Warcraft lore. Really, I wish we got to see a lot more of that, and one thing that always disappointed me a little bit is that in Erythai Basin, there was always, like, hints, and, you know, you got to go to, um, 
Strom thingy, the, the big city. Stromgard, I believe. Um, you know, you got to go there, but I wish there was more to that. I don't know if the Cataclysm added a major amount, but it was really cool. So, Thordain. When I saw the antechamber, I knew I had found something monumentous. Here was a door so oddly familiar, like a long-forgotten memory. Here we broke the first seal. Sometimes, I don't know, that, that feels like a little bit awkward in terms of how it's, how it's written. That said, that could just be me, um, you know, misreading it or something in, in this video, which often does happen because, uh, well, it's just the nature of recording shit live. Though, to be honest, there are lots of times you never see it because I always cut it out where I read something and then I'm completely sure that it's wrong and then I reread it and it turns out it's been right and it's just, uh, you know, the Blizzard have written a really, really awkward line of dialogue. Kind of unfortunate. Anyhow, there's that guy dead, so we're just going to be blasting our way through here. Stage 5, cleansing the desecration. The prison entrance is blocked with corruption. Cleanse the tomb. One of its minions has returned as I feared. Something here is corrupting the wards of the tomb and blocking the path. You must destroy the tendrils and force it to appear. Those tendrils are casting some sort of immunity to damage. You will need to interrupt their casting to damage them. Oh, yeah. Notice that. Should have noticed that, even. That's cool. The more in these quests that they integrate class mechanics, the better. So right now, it's just doing a mind flay. I'm pretty sure on the Shadow Priest, it didn't do that mechanic. So that's definitely nice to see. Anyhow, that's all the tre the tendrils are dead. So stage six, the root of corruption. There it is. Wait, on top of the crypt, prepare yourself. Oh shit! Yeah. So we've got this guardian guy. So I just used battle cry, which is basically the new recklessness. Um, I used that and colossus smash at the same time. Lots of damage, but he's now teleporting away. And oh no, he just popped off again. <laughs> that's um, slightly annoying, but anyhow. You should be pretty much bollock now because I do have access to execute. So, stage seven, the dark passage, the way below is uncovered. Make your way to the prison of Zakaja. What's he called? Hang on. Ah, uh, I can't see the text anymore. Zakajaz, yeah, Zakajaz. So down we hop, and we're actually going to be able to use loads of whirlwinds here. Which is very fun because whirlwind, I mean, just what a cool animation, right? Some more enemies to cleave our way through. Looks like there's almost a bit of a I don't know, I, I was seeing a Klaxi design on that faceless, like, at a glance, but now that I look at it a little bit closer, I'm the one that's in the background there, I don't really think I'm seeing it anymore. I think it might just be, be um, because it's red. Those monsters use mind tricks to confuse their foes, beware their illusions. Indeed I will. This guy's actually- oh no, he doesn't have much health, it's just- I'm outside of Colossus Smash, so I do hardly any damage. Of course, Colossus Smash- oh wait, I've actually got a talent- yeah, I've got a talent active, which- causes Colossus Smash's debuff to do half as much, like, be half as effective, but last twice as long. I wonder if it's better just going for Mortal Combo for the sake of, um, of, of just regular damage dealing. Mortal Combo, what it does is it actually gives me two charges of Mortal Strike to use, which is pretty cool. So here we go, that's Zakajaz. There lies my final battle. Already Zakajaz struggles for consciousness. It knows we are here. We must hurry. Cool stuff. And there you can see Stromkar, which is kind of, like, you know, buried inside him. Fantastic. A quick execution. Zakajaz is struggling to defend itself, draw out the sword, and perform the final blow. I've got a feeling Zakajaz won't make it that easy for us, but uh, let's get in here and see what happens. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> back we are blasted. Did I manage to pick the weapon up? No. No, I didn't. We are too late. Zakajaz has awoken. Yep, indeed. He's got what? Oh, 500k health. <laughs> This shall be simple. Oh, I I forgot to use Colossus Smash. So that was not a very effective Blade Storm. But you can do a Colossus Smash, and then during that Colossus Smash window, two Mortal Strikes. Which, as you can imagine, like, that's just a lot of damage. And he's already at a state of having not that much health left. But he does have quite a few adds. Adds that are very quickly dispatched. Dispatched. And, uh, yeah, we get into Execute range, and he's dead. So Thoradain did warn us about some new attacks that he do, but it doesn't exactly matter when the enemy dies that quickly. Stage 6, kill Sathaxi. So Zakajaz is awake, blah blah blah. Okay, a little bit strange there. I suppose we need to pick Stromkar up, though, and then kill whoever this final person is. Or not, I actually can't use anything. It, it looks like it just kind of broke. Well, unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to reset this and redo the whole thing, so I'll see you in what, well, for you, will only take a minute. Actually, it won't take a minute, it'll take a matter of seconds. You've done what I could not. You know what needs to be done. Take up the Warbreaker and end the threat of Zakajaz. 
once and for all. Sweet, so now we're finally getting our weapon. Strom Car the Waterbreaker. Very cool. Yep, not, you know, not the best model ever, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, as far as swords go, it's a solid sword. Oh, what's this? Ah, execute, our big execute button. Let's finish him off. Okay, that was pretty cool. And now we just need to use Sky Jump to head back to the Halls of Valor. At least this nightmare is over now. I can finally leave this place once and for all. Between its unique forging and the elven magics, it is quite strong. It deserves to be used. I know not if burying it in the beast over the centuries will have any effect, but you sure you seem strong enough to handle it. Yes, I do. So let's have a look at its effects. Ah, never mind. We actually need to head back and, um, and slot into the forge before we see what its, um, its other stuff is. So we're back in the Halls of Valor, and it's funny, I just got a tweet, I'm in between recording here, just got a tweet from somebody saying that a lot of the people who um, enjoy ARMS are really happy with these changes because they hated the Warlords ones. I don't know, like, it still feels pretty dull to me, but there could be something that I'm missing, so I'll do quite a bit of research before I cover my video. Great, so your new weapon is very powerful, but my smiths have mastered crafting over thousands of years. Speak to Master Smith Helgar to see what improvements can be made. That just takes us over to the Forge of Odin, which is here to this Master Smith guy, and we'll get to see what the active effect of this artifact weapon is. So if I click on this, right, Corrupted Rage stomped the ground, causing a ring of corrupted spikes to erupt upwards, dealing 26,000 shadow damage and applying Colossus Smash to all enemies within eight yards. Oh shit, right, so. We've got this, which does the Colossus Smash effect every one minute, and then we've got Colossus Smash itself, which of course does the Colossus Smash effect every 45 seconds. With this talent here, which, you know, this like doubles the duration of Colossus Smash, this means this lasts for 12 seconds, and then this will last for another 12 seconds, meaning 24 seconds of uptime in a row before you then need to wait the remaining, or remaining like, what, 33 seconds for this to come back. So maybe that's something. I don't know, still not really feeling this, but that's pretty much what's going on with their artifact weapon. And that really is it for this video. Quick look at the lore. You know, I think the quest, yeah, it's a bit unfortunate we didn't get something new, honestly, but it was very cool lore. And I would just love to see more about the, the Kingdom of Arathor, maybe that uh, Thoradain guy. Lots of cool stuff there. Um, Yeah, so that's pretty much that, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.